Hey gang, Tim here at Core Electronics, and today we'll be creating graphical user interfaces using the powerful Tkinter library. We're gonna make a calculator in Python. So as an overview, graphical user interfaces are referred to as GUI and can also be pronounced as GUI. GUI is a visual way of interacting with a computer using items such as windows, icons, and menus. These are present in most modern operating systems and substantially improves communication between yourself and the computing device. GUI can be created using many different external packages in Python. However, this guide will focus on the Tkinter library. Tkinter is a lightweight toolkit and one of the simplest GUI solutions for Python. This software allows us to create windows and populate them with buttons, menu bars, text, number, input, selections, images, radio buttons, checkbooks, sliders, drop down menus, and even labels. That's a mouthful. All these options are fully customizable. For instance, the Tkinter pop-up window can be resized, minimized, maximized, and closed. So to create all of this from scratch, it would involve lots and lots of code and logic, but thankfully, because of Tkinter library, we don't need to do all of that. Tkinter is also a great tool to interact with databases and display graphs or charts. So let's get into it. Firstly, we're going to check if Tkinter is working and installed on your version of Python. So we're going to utilize the command prompt to do this. To access command prompt, you're going to go down to the Windows button. We're going to type command prompt. Now I'm going to type in python dash m tkinter. Running this, you will see a window pop up. This window pops up on your system. It means tkinter is running perfectly fine. It has two buttons, a click me button and a quit button. This will also display the version of Tkinter you have installed in your system. Now, if you're running into errors here, our Core Electronics write-up on this guide has a number of potential solutions which can help you. This guide also has a very simple two-button Python script to let you dip your toes more gently into GUI creation with Tkinter. Now, with that out of the way, let's dive into the process of creating an addition and subtraction calculator using Tkinter. This script highlights numerous functionalities of this library and making practical software tools like this, I feel is immensely rewarding. So let's jump into the computer. On screen, you can see the Python programming window open and underneath the Python idle shell. So to start, we're gonna import that functionality of Tkinter. By writing this line and using this star, we'll import absolutely everything inside Tkinter. Now we're gonna give our pop-up window a name. So in this case, we're gonna call it calc. This function right here creates that pop-up window. We're gonna give this window a title. And we'll say exactly what it is. Adding and subtracting Calculate end string close bracket. Now we'll give a rough idea of the geometry, and this determines the size of the window. Geometry, so spell it, and we do this like so. So this is going to be 270 pixels long. 180 pixels tall. And we'll also make it nice to look at. So calc bg for background, that's also a string variable, equals how to blue. And with that, I'll look back through my code. And I can see here I made a small mistake. This needs to be a capital TK. And apart from that, everything should be good. So if I run this now and save, you'll see on the screen, our adding and subtracting calculator window has appeared. This is a good sign. 
So we'll close this for now. Give some space on the idle shell and continue on our way. So now what we're going to do is create some labels. So labels are good because it tells people exactly what buttons to press and what those buttons are meant to be doing. So labels are given a location on the window and you can also decide the text, whether it's the size is large or small or whether the text is bold. So we'll do a bit of that right now. So we're going to call first label. And this will be our first one. This will be label. It's going to go on calc, calc being our window. The text is going to be first number. Throw in some capital letters there because they look neat. And string dash and this font we're going to make bold. Capital B or not capital B shouldn't matter in this case, but keep it consistent. And with that first label, we've now defined all the settings for it. So now we need to give it a location. So first label dot place, and we're going to put this starting at the 40th pixel across and 20 pixels down. Add a little comment. And if I run this now, excuse me, font equals. So after looking back through, I see I needed to add an equals right there. So now if I run this now, you'll see a label has appeared. So I'm going to do this a couple more times to add some more labels. And I'll do it by copying and pasting this text. One, two, three. This right here will be second. Copy that. Paste that there. This will be third. Copy that. Paste that here. And this will be fourth. Copy that. Place that here. At the moment, all the labels will be stacked on top of each other. That's not what we want because they all have the same location. We're also going to change this because that's going to be second label. This is going to say or. We'll understand soon why that says or. And this one is going to say result. This one up here, we will make it not bold. We'll also make it actually say or. And now we're going to alter the locations of second, third, and fourth label. So second label can be at the same height as the first label, but will can be at the same latitude as the first label, but we will lower it down a little bit. This one we're going to make a three. This one we're going to make three, five, eight. This one will be five, five, six. This one will be 52. These numbers might seem a little bit weird, but it just has to do with making the final result look aesthetic. So with that, all our labels should be all good to go. So if I save this now and run it, you'll see first number, second number, or, and result. So just an idea to get the idea for the game plan. Here, we're going to have an input one number. Here, we're going to have an import, an import box, the other number. Over here, we'll have addition. Over here, we'll have subtraction. Both of those will be buttons. And here will be the result, which will also be a window. Nice. So now we're going to create those entry windows. So the way we're going to go about this, because there's going to be three of them, we're going to go first number. Yeah, we're going to say first number equals entry. This creates one of those entry boxes. First 
number dot place. Now this is all functionality that you get from the tkinter. Make sure you put an equal sign in there. So we're going to do this three more times. In fact, I'll show you what this looks like right now. Looks like this. Now we have a place where we can type text. So we're going to do that two more times. This is going to be second. Copy that. Paste that. And this will be third. In fact, let's call this result number because that's what this text box will be mainly used for. It won't be for entering symbols or letters or numbers. It will be for displaying the result of the addition or the subtraction. So let's place this one. This one we're going to place a little bit lower. So we're going to place that at 120. 120, 120, interesting. This guy is going to be far to the right. So it's going to be 520 pixels to the right, and we'll lower it as well. And with that, when I save this, oops, excuse me. When I save this now and run it, you will see first number, second number, or, and result. So all we need to do now is make two buttons. So the way I'm going to approach this is by defining what the buttons will do and then putting the buttons on the page. So right now, we're going to define a function. This function is going to be called add. So first off, before I demonstrate all of this, if we come back, run this again, it's possible to type things in here. So when we put our two numbers here, we'll want this area to be clear and then the result to be displayed. So the first part of this function will be deleting anything that we see in the result number box. Let me spell delete correctly. Zero, end. And that's exactly what that function will do. Now, what we want to happen is we want to grab the information from the first entry window, entry from the second window, and then we want to add them together. So let's create a variable for the first window and a variable for the second window, which grabs that information. So we're going to call this first, and that equals an integer number. First number dot get. This functionality dot get comes from the tkinter. Second equals integer second number dot get bracket 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 and then we're going to go calculation equals first plus second symbol that's the actual addition occurring and then we want to display that result to the result entry window we use that by doing insert end dash string calculation. Calculation should already be a string because it's two. Calculation currently is an integer, but we're going to turn that integer number into a string variable, which is what we're doing right here. Two brackets and an end. And with that, we've defined our addition function. So this is an addition and a subtraction calculator. So what I'm going to do is copy all of this, paste it here. You'll see that this is indented. All of these things that I indented are part of this particular function. Now we're going to create a new function. This one's going to be called sub. And there's only going to be one small change, which is that. Nice. So now we've defined what we want these buttons to do when they're clicked. 
So let's actually put the buttons onto our window. So what we're going to do is call button one. So we'll say button placement. Button one equals button. We're going to put it on the count window. So that's what we're going to say here. We're going to type text dash add. That's what the button is going to say in that string. And then we're going to say command. And this is how you make buttons do things. Command, command. And then we're going to type equals add. Just like that, finishing the bracket, we have now a button creation and placement. So button one dot place. So we're going to place this at x equals 310 and y equals 80. Now, this is the add button. We need a subtraction button. So we're going to copy and paste most of this. We're then going to go button two, button two. We're going to call this subtraction. Going to encourage it to go here. So every time this button is clicked, it's going to run through this function. And we're going to change the placement just a little bit. So it's further across. So having written all of this, let's go through our code quickly, see if there's any errors. This one comes up very obvious. So this needs an equal sign. So it's this. So now having gone through and fixed that problem by clicking run, you can see we have our almost complete calculator. We're going to add one more thing. Come back into here. We're going to add calc dot main loop bracket bracket. Now this effectively makes an infinite loop. Another way to make an infinite loop would be while true putting while true at the top, indentating all of this. But calc main loop is a tkinter way of looping this whole thing. So when I run this window, it will constantly be searching for new information, constantly figuring things out, constantly running, constantly adding and subtracting, so long as we continue putting numbers to add and subtract. So let's stretch out this so we can see as much of our code as we can and quickly go through do some proofreading. This is something that's standing out to me. This end needs to all be capitals. So does this end. Now, saving the code and running it. We can now see our adding and subtracting calculator. Window has popped up. Let me just bring it back real quick. So let's test it out, see if it works. 10, 5, add them together, the result is 15. Pretty swell. What if it's 50 and we want to take 20? Pretty swell, also working. You can do it with even really big numbers and it works just like that, how it should. Now. It would only take a couple more steps to include multiplication and division, going through a similar kind of process, and the same with any other calculation method. So with that, I'd like to thank you for coming on this Python journey with me. I hope this has inspired some coding skylarking in your own world. You're all immensely swell, and until next time, stay cozy.